Everybody, you are about to watch the Fala Bible Church program, the moment of transformation. Today, by the grace of the Lord, we shall listen to our pastor, General Superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoyi. You are going to be blessed. It is my wish that you call your family to come and listen to you, as our pastor is blessing you with his holiness message. God bless you. You can sit down. We are looking at the word of God at this time. I need to make you understand, especially those who might not notice how we bring uh, some of these messages we bring on Sunday. When we study an important subject during the time of searching the scriptures together, and we see that there are things the people of God need to understand. So we go along that same line. And I pray that today the Lord will give you a better understanding of his word in Jesus' name. In 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Here we have in verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 7. Consider what I say. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things. The beauty of the Christian life is that you are not partially instructed. You are not partially enlightened. And you are not partially helped to understand only one part of scripture. But the beauty is that wherever you go in the scripture, you ask yourself, what's that? Why is that? When will that happen again? How does that happen in our lives? That's why it says you need to consider everything you read, everything you learn. And then it says the Lord will give who? You understanding in how many things? In all things. You know, sometimes when you read uh, these uh, stories we're reading in the Old Testament, especially now we come to the life of Eli and the two sons. And you have the judgment coming. And the Lord predicted it. He said it was coming. But Eli was not challenged. Eli grew thick skin. Eli was carefree. Eli said, that's all right. He's the Lord. Let him do as he wills. He has the chance to do whatever he wants. You see, other people did not act like that. Moses did not act like that. When God said, I'm going to destroy all of them. He didn't say he's God. Let him do what he wants. Abraham did not act like that. When God said, the cry of Sodom is come before me, I'll go and see whether this be so. If not, the cup of iniquity is full. I'm going to destroy them. If Abraham didn't say, is God? Let him do as he will. Here comes Jonah. And he went through the city of Nineveh. When we talk about Abraham, we even understand as a friend of God. When we talk about Moses, we understand as a servant of God. We're not talking about Nineveh. And Jonah went through and said, I'm telling you something, this is final. This is, I use the word peremptory. That means there is nothing that can change this. Irreversible. Yet, 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. The king of Nineveh did not say, that's God, we're wicked, we're bad, and God hates sin. It's of pure eyes that to behold iniquity, he has decided that's what he will do. That's all right. They didn't act like that. And because the king had a right attitude, that's how Nineveh was spared at that time. 
You see, no matter what judgment may even be upon you, you've gone so far, you've gone so deep, it appears you are irretrievable, incorrigible, it appears that the final has come. Your attitude can change everything. And this morning, your attitude will change everything. There are people, they just say, well, my father did that, my mother did that, I also did this, what can I expect? And God is of pure eyes and to behold iniquity. He has said, this is what you will do. That's all, that's all. Don't be like Eli. Something will change. Something will turn around. And you will not say, I carry this judgment. I carry this body. That's all. This day, it will change your destiny. But why do we learn from all this is because, you see, when you see somebody going in front of you and he fell into a pitfall, you watch. You will not say, okay, I'm going to fall in the same place. That's why we read all this. Look at Isaiah chapter 26. And I'm reading from verse 9. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 9. It says, with my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. Listen to this now. For when thy judgments are in the earth. Think about that. When thy judgments are in the earth. I see the judgment coming on Eli. I see the judgment coming on Un Ophni and Phinehas. What does that tell me? It says the next part there. The inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. You see, that's the reason why we read all this and we learn from them. I see the judgment coming on Eli and on Eli's house. I say, ah, it's time for me to wake up. I need to learn righteousness because when the judgments are here on earth, then the inhabitants of the world must learn righteousness. In fact, that's the reason why Daniel rebuked Belshazzar. He said, you saw the judgment on your father. And you saw how the mighty hand came of God came upon him. You should have learned righteousness from that. After you saw what God did, contrary to Nebuchadnezzar, and made him like an animal, for seven seasons, seven years, you should have seen that and learned righteousness. That's the reason why God preserves all these things for us. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. The people that fell into judgment under the wrath of God. We've seen that and that means that we will not fall into the same judgment. Give me a good amen over there. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 5. It says, but with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Uh -huh. It now tells us about the children of Israel. Judgment came on them. You ask, what did they do? They spoke against God. They spoke against Moses. What did they do? They joined the Moabites and they went into Baal Peor. They worshipped idols. And because of that judgment came upon them. Look at verse 6. Now these things were our examples to the intent for the purpose. We should not lost after evil things as they also lost it. What's telling us is that if you see what other people have suffered, you say, I will not suffer that again. If you see the punishment and the wrath other people have endured and they brought upon themselves, you say, this is the way of perdition. And I'm not going to follow that way. One example is enough for me. You know, the, the people of the world, they tell themselves. I don't want to say they tell us because the people of the world, they will not influence you. They say, experience is the best teacher. Have you heard that before? 
Ah, experience is the best teacher. What they mean is this. You see, if you have never been a drunkard, you will not know all the hazards that come upon a drunkard. Experience is the best teacher. If you have never had an accident and you, have, you know you have never been careless, you need to have accident, you will not know how painful an accident is. Experience is the best teacher. Uh -uh. Observation is the best teacher. I don't want to go through what Eli goes through. How about you? I don't want to go through what your friend Finney has went through. How about you? Experience. They got the experience. They have died. The experience they taught them nothing. They are now on the other side. But you, you will not wait for a bad experience to be your teacher. Observation will be your teacher. That is, see what happened to Eli. I observe. I see. Because of what I see, I learn. Look at what happened to Ophni and Phineas. I will not go through that again. You will not go through that. Yeah. I was looking, a man was saying that even before he became born again, that he never tasted alcohol, he never tasted marijuana, he never tasted this or that, and he asked the people that was talking to him, said, why? Because I was drunk? He said, no. Because I was a good, good person? He said, no. He said, he was a sinner. But his father was a drunkard. And he used to see how his father will fall and vomit. And he said, when I grow up, I will never take alcohol in my life. Because he observed, he observed. And then he saw that his father will sell, had drugs and marijuana. And the police people, they'd be looking for him, chasing him about that his father will not sleep at home. His father will be hiding away from the policemen. And he said, when I grow up, I will never touch this. You know what that young man was saying? He said, experience is not the best teacher. My father is not learning anything from what's happening to him. Observation is the best teacher. He wasn't even born again then. It was many, many years after. And at this, he said he was nine years of age when he made up his mind. He'll never drink. He'll never soup for a journal. He'll never do this, this, and that that he saw his father doing because he observed. I pray that observation will be a great teacher for you. You see what has happened to other people, you say, that will never happen to me. And it will never happen to you. Yeah. You'll go through life under the protection of the Lord in Jesus' name. Yeah. Look at that, First Corinthians chapter 10. It says in verse 7, Neither be ye idolaters. Why? Because some of, uh, some of them, as it was as it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink, and they rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell in one day. How many? Three and twenty thousand. He said, I'm going to learn by observation. I see what happened to other people, how they died prematurely. And went to hell unnecessarily. He said, because of that, I will never do that. Neither let us be fornicators as they were, idolaters as they were. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed or serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Look at verse 11. Learn. See what happened to other people and learn. Now all these things happened unto them for examples. And they are, tell me, reaching for our admonition. That is, we look at what they have done. We look at the judgment that came upon them. And they are reaching for our instruction, for admonition, for our exhortation upon whom the ends of the world are come. It says... They happen in the Old Testament. And we are in the New Covenant. And everything that happened to them in days gone by, they are for our learning. I pray you will learn. 
Romans chapter 15. And I'm reading here from verse 4. It happened for in receive. And it happened so that you will learn. Do you know if you will learn from everything we've been reading, what happened to other people? Not only what happened to other people in the Bible, what happened to other people in our day? And you observe very well. You can make up your mind. You are going to live a better life. A richer life. A happier life. And you are going to live a more righteous life. Because all those calamities that came upon them will not come upon you. Yeah. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. For whatsoever things were reaching a full time. Were reaching for our learning. That we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You see, as you read about Nineveh, and you see what happened to them, that Jonah said, there is no way of escaping this one 40 days. Less than six weeks, Nineveh will be totally overthrown. And the people believed the message. And they went to God in prayer, and they repented. What have you done? That you are saying that, well, it looks like it's finished for me. No, it's not finished for you. A new page will be opened today in your life in Jesus' name. All you need to do is to learn. I'm talking to you today on profiting from God's warning and judgment. Profiting from God's warning and judgment. He warned them, other people. He judged them, other people. And you look at that warning, and you look at that judgment, you say, I will profit by the warning I read. I will profit by the judgment I see on others. What's the profit? So that that same judgment will never come upon you. Will never come upon your family. Will never come upon your children. I will never come upon you as a person in Jesus' name. Do you know that your life can be better than the lives of our parents? Do you know that your inheritance and what to become can be better than even the lives of better than the lives of the people that were Christians before us? I said, you know that. You look at what happened to them. You look at, you know, the heartache and everything they had. You know, there are people, daddy and mommy, they were married. Just like, you know, any of us. They didn't know the gospel. They tried their best. But you know how daddy treated mommy. And there are people that will say, aha, uh -huh, that's how daddy treated mommy. That's how I'm going to No. We don't go into the same mistake, into the same pitfall, into the same harassment and family conflict that our parents had. You make up your mind, you say, that happened to them. That's a warning for me. That happened to them. That's a warning for me. What happened to them will not happen to you. Your family should be better. Your life should be better. Your profession should be better. And in every area, the people who have gone before you, who have gone ahead of you, you see what they have done, you will do what they have done, good things, and then you'll be better in Jesus' name. You climb on the shoulders of the people before you, so that as you climb on their shoulders, you look ahead, you'll see farther than they ever saw in Jesus' name. Profiting from God's warning and judgment. Three points we're going to look at. The warning and expression of eternal judgment. The warning and the expression of eternal judgment. Number two, our watchfulness and escape from eternal judgment. Our watchfulness and escape from eternal judgment. Number three, the word of exhortation for enduring justification. Justification is another word for salvation. Your salvation will endure. Your salvation will abide. Your salvation will remain steadfast in Jesus' name. The warning and the expression of eternal judgment. 
And as we read all this, you are saying, by the grace of God, I hear that warning, I see that warning, I read that warning, I will not go through eternal punishment. Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? He warned them. He said, there is wrath to come. There is punishment coming. Bring forth therefore fruit, meat for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Therefore, every tree which bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. You see, he watched them. And the reason the warning came is so that they will avoid the judgment of God. And the reason why the Lord has given us his word, which gives us warning, is that we will avoid the judgment that God had promised, pronounced, predicted, prophesied in that passage we're reading. That's what uh, is because the Eli did not take heed to those warnings. That's why he perished. You will take heed, you will not perish. And you see, when God wants Noah, we're looking at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 7. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, by faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not yet, not seen as yet, moved with fear, and prepared an act to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. The one he came, and Noah took heed. How many times has the Lord warned us in his word? You're reading the word by yourself, and he warned you, and he said, don't go that way. Don't touch that thing. Don't see that thing. Don't join those people. If you didn't take heed, then eventually you say, and I know. The Lord actually spoke to me. When God spoke to Noah, he took heed. He accepted. But the many people around him, the Lord also spoke to them through Noah. Because he was a preacher of righteousness. But they did not take heed. They perished. You will take it, you will not perish. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ used the story of Noah. And he tells us in Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 36, that the warning is coming again. Judgment is coming upon this world. It will not be a flood of water. It will be in the flames of fire. That everything that you see in the world today is revealed is uh, reserved unto the conflagration of fire. And as Noah took heed to the warning of the Lord, so he wants you to take heed. He doesn't want to live your life as if there's no danger, there's no problem at all. I move here, I move there. No repentance, no righteousness, no restitution, no redemption. I just live the way I want. No, you will do like Noah did and you will take heed. So the warning is given us. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Already he has warned us that there are people that will be coming, there will be certain dates. They will say, uh, 2000 and such and such, Christ will come. And he will put a book in your hand. And he'll say, tell other people, tell other people, it is at this very time Christ will come. But Jesus said, nobody knows. Already he told us ahead of time, so that you will not be deceived. Nobody will deceive you. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, 
They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Took them all away. They didn't heed the warning. They didn't profit by the warning that the Lord had given them. Can you imagine anybody in our church here that has been hearing about the rapture? Can you imagine anyone here, young or old, that has known, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And he keeps coming every time. And it, it doesn't dawn on him. That he is not born again. And if the question came to him, if you died this afternoon, where will you spend eternity? He'll be afraid. If you died today, where will you spend years without number? Your life eternally they do not understand and yet they come to church and they go out they crawl in and they crawl out without understanding that the day may come to them unprepared and then that day comes and where will your soul be but you see these people they just get kept on Marrying and giving in marriage, trading and farming and uh, merchandising, whatever they were doing. Only business, only business and their prayer. Give me money, give me wife, give me children, give me house, give me car, give me this. Only material things until the day that no enter into the ark. And Jesus said, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. We're to profit by the warnings he gives us. We're to urgently handle the problem I must be saved. How many times have you heard? Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Do you really believe that? That without holiness no man shall see the Lord in your office, in your home, when your wife is there, when your wife is not there. The things you do you know, people can, because of this uh, kind of technology, the age of technology, people can be seen in, even in front of a person like this, and that person will not know anything happening. They can be sending pictures to themselves, nude pictures. They can be sending rubbish to themselves to pollute their hearts. And people are there, multitudes of people, even the closest person may be there by your side. That you wish, you, they will not know. And how can they know? You are just sending and they are sending to you and then you are enjoying the lust of the flesh. And the pride of life. And the lust of the eyes. Right in the presence of you. And you can keep it private. Technology has helped you to commit sin without anybody being able to catch you. And the day will come unawares when you are not prepared. If it happens like that, would you say you are not one? Okay, you are one. It's just like you are like Eli. He is God. Let him do whatever he wants to do. Your two children will die in one day. Open your fingers. He is God. Let him do as he will. If I say that you and your house will be pleased with me forever, now I change my mind. Be it far from me. You will not be a priest unto many. He is God. Let him do as he will. There will be no old man in your house anymore. Even the people that remain, I'll preserve them to make, to make them a sorrow unto you. And sons in your side. Because they'll be begging for bread. He is God. Let him do as he will. That man, a priest, high priest, he was worse than an even king. King of Nineveh. When the king of Nineveh had that, he didn't say his God, let him do as he said, everybody repent of the violence in your hand and take away all those evil things you are doing and let every man, let them fast before the Lord. Don't eat, don't drink water. Let us cry unto the Lord. Maybe he will save us. Jonah did not even give them any assurance that God will forgive, but God is a loving God. I said, God is a merciful God. And if forgive me, neighbor, of course, he will forgive you. Yeah. If you will say, repentance is urgent. Salvation is urgent. Put everything aside. 
Once he's willing to forgive you and Christ may come today. Do you know what last message you will hear before Christ comes? Who knows? The last Sunday service will attend before Jesus comes. Who knows? They didn't know. Noah had been preaching 120 years. They didn't know. Uncle Noah started again. Did you hear him early this morning? He will not allow us to sleep. And he's saying, hey, the flood is coming. The flood is coming. I said, Uncle Noah, you're an old man. Come on now. Go and take your rest. You need some rest. You need some sleep. All these harassment and saying, flood is coming. There is no flood. There is no rain. And one day, the Lord said, Noah, the time is up. You don't know. The last opportunity you will hear for you to go to your knees and say, I know. I must follow peace with all men. You know, there are people who are coming to this church. Husband and wife, like cat and rat at home. They taunt, they tempt, they torture, they tease each other. They oppress each other. Husband and wife. And they come to church and know Bible. They come to church and deeper life. Uh, one day, one day, the trumpet will sound. And then where will you be on that day? This is the day to check up your life and align your life with the word of God. Today, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That salvation is coming your way. I'm looking at uh, Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. And I'm reading from verse 4. Luke chapter 12. And we're reading from verse 4. And I say unto you, my friends. Look at this. Jesus talking to his own disciples. And he called them friends. He said, I brought you near. But you know, if you love your friends, you're going to want them of the calamity that is to come. You're going to warn them of the judgment coming. You're going to warn them that there is wrath, there is judgment that is going to come on sin and so do not repent. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. Look up here for a moment. This is not the first time you are hearing that verse of scripture read. Why do we compromise in our offices? Fear of man. Why do we compromise with our in-laws? Fear of man. Why do we compromise with our community people? Fear of man. Why do we know so much and we leave so little below the standard we know? Fear of man. If there were no fear of man, if man could do nothing to you, if everybody encouraged you, if everybody smiled at you, if everybody embraced you, you'll probably live a better life. But because you want to take your stand, they frown. You want to stand for the truth. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. You soldiers of the cross. Because you want to take your stand. They say, ah, yeah. Pastor, are you going to be a pastor in the office? We we'll say bribery, we we'll say this one, we we'll say sign this, sign that. You'll not sign. Come on now, sign this. When you get to your church, go and practice what you want to do. But here, this is what you do. Because they talk like that, that's why you compromise. That's why we're not sure of your salvation. We're not sure where you stand. The holiness is not there. Even when you're among believers, believers like yourself. You're on your way to heaven. Believers like yourself who are pilgrims going to heaven. You fear them. You say, I don't know whether he, believer, will approve of this or not. What does that matter? If that is the will of God, if that is the might of God, if that is the call of God upon your life, we're looking for approval. We're looking for assurance. We're looking for acceptance. Do they accept this? Does that matter? He says, stand up in that boss and declare the gospel. You look around, will they appreciate that? What does that matter? That's what Jesus said. And what Jesus said is what we do. You are going to do it. You live your life. You know, this is the way to go. And those who are annoyed by that, those who have stomach ache or ulcer, because you are doing the will of God, good luck to them. Their ulcer will be 
will go on as long as you are alive because from today you will do the word of God you will do the will of God whoever accepts whoever rejects whoever approves of your life whoever disapproves of your life this is the way walk ye therein you will walk there I said you will walk there Look at Uncle Noah. He came out again and he said, A flood is coming. And the people were jesty. He didn't look at them. He said, It is coming. He said, But there's no rain. He said, Don't worry, it is coming. And then everybody, they put him down. They rejected him. And then they ostracized his family. He said, It doesn't matter. A person that can stand in the whole world, I'm not talking of in this city, I'm talking of in the whole world, I'm not talking of in a single state, I'm talking of the world, I'm not talking of in a nation, a man in the whole world with his wife, with his three sons, and with his three daughters, daughters-in-law, only eight of them among thousands and thousands and thousands of people all over the world, he said, whatever you do, whatever you think, here I stand. I'm talking to somebody there today. I said I'm talking to somebody there today. Where are you? Where are you? You'll be like that. You will stand. The wind will blow. And the rain will come. And the people will come. They'll talk against you. You will hear. Uh -uh. If, if they don't move by what you say, why should you move by what they say? Think about That's not fair. I talk. I preach holiness, I live holiness, I declare holiness, I emphasize holiness, and he doesn't want to hear. And now he talks rubbish, he talks disobedience, he talks rebellion, and then I move, I say, come on now, preacher, that's not right. If I talk and they don't hear, when they talk, I, I don't hear. I say when they talk, I don't hear. If I stand up for Jesus, I stand up for the Savior, I stand up for the Almighty God, and I say this is the will of God, and they will not hear. When they stand for Satan, and they say this is what Satan was, I say shut up, you didn't hear the word of God, I'm not going to hear your word. If they will not bend, they will not bow to the word of the almighty God, I am not going to bow, I'm not going to bend to the word of Satan or to the word of society. I stand with Noah, I stand like Noah. I'm calling upon you, you'll stand with me. I said you'll stand with me. The warning came, and when the warning came, it took heed to the warning. That's how they escaped the judgment. Look at what Jesus said in verse 5. In verse 5 it says, But I will forewarn you. He was talking to his friends. I will forewarn you. He was talking to the disciples. I will forewarn you. He was talking to believers. I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him. Which after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Point number two, our watchfulness. Our watchfulness and escape from eternal judgment. I will escape. I will escape. It takes watchfulness. That's why it says in Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21, and I'm reading to you from verse 34. Luke chapter 21, we're reading from verse 34. Here is what it says, verse 34, now verse 34. It says, and take heed to yourselves. Watch over yourself. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time. What does that mean, any time? That's what it means. Any time, time of joy, don't forget yourself. Time of celebration, don't forget yourself. Time of poverty, don't forget yourself. And time of prosperity, don't forget yourself. Have you noticed, look up here for a moment. Have you noticed people, when they are poor, there's no food, there's no accommodation, and there's no way to pay their house rent, they're fervent, they're prayerful, they're fasting. Oh God, answer me. You said you will not forsake your own. You said, seek ye for the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. All these things I will add unto you. Men ought always to pray and not to fail. You said that man, the unjust judge, that he gave him, he gave her what you wanted. I'm knocking at your door. I'm asking. I'm seeking. I'm knocking when they are poor. 
when they have no clothes, when they don't get to a good school they want to get to, and when it appears that they are facing trouble and trial, tribulation around them, they pray. But now, anytime, anytime, now God answers that prayer, food has come. Accommodation is there now. There's a job there. There's even a means of transportation for the family. Everything is at ease now. Do you still pray like that? Are you still seeking the face of God like that? Or as the prosperity and the ease and everything now change everything? Now you sleep too much. Now you don't read the Bible anymore. Now you don't go to the meetings anymore. You're a leader, you're a worker. A work has come. Now in the office, a work has come of business. And the business has taken you away from the work you are committed to. When there was no job, you were committed. You were always there. Are you still always there? Look at this, it says, and take heed to yourselves. Less at any time, your hearts be overcharged was so fitting and drunkenness and the cares of this life and the cares of this life so that they come upon you unawares unprepared for the snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the old earth watch ye therefore you see that it calls us to watchfulness so that we will escape the judgment coming upon this world. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. I'm going to ask a question. I'll get ready. Will the believers, the true believers, will they go through the great tribulation? I said, will the true believers go through the great tribulation? No, it says those who, are, those who are watching and those who are taking heed and those who are preparing for the coming of the Lord, they will escape all these things that shall come to pass and they shall stand before the Son of Man. You will escape. I said you will escape. But he calls us to watchfulness. Watchfulness. He says, well, watch so that we can escape. The day came when the angels came to Sodom and Gomorrah. In Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. And I'm reading here from verse 15. And those angels announced to Lord and to the family of Lord that the end had come for Sodom and Gomorrah. Again, let's learn a lesson here. God said, I'm going to even see whether those things are so. Of course, he knew. He knew. But was using the language of man so that Abraham will know that something was going to happen in Sodom. And Abraham went before the Lord. Oh, Lord, the judge of all the earth. Will you not do right? Will you destroy the righteous or the wicked? What if you see 50 righteous people there? Will you not spare them? And God said, I'll spare them. Think about that. Think about that. And it says, I about 40. I'll spare them. I about 30. I'll spare them. I about 20. I'll spare them. Oh God, do not be annoyed with me. I'm going to go a step further in that whole Sodom and Gomorrah. What if you find only 10 righteous people there? Will you spare them? And God said, I will spare them. And the angels came to Sodom. And then they told Lord, oh, the Lord has sent us here to destroy the city. Go tell all your relatives they were not saved before. That moment they could be saved. They were not born again before. That moment they could be born again. They were under the wrath of God. The people that married your daughters or whatever, go tell them. And they went to tell them. They missed their opportunity. You will not miss your opportunity. And it was like Lord was mocking before them, jesting before them. They said, Lord, you couldn't be serious about that. There's a negative side to that. If you are always frivolous and careless and you are not serious, the day you bring a serious message, people will be looking at you funny. They'll be wondering, 
what came upon her, what came upon him. This is not you. When you bring something serious, that today judgment is coming, nobody will believe you. Because you have always been like the clown of the community. You have always been the fool, playing the foolery among the people and so they said lord you couldn't be serious about this and when the angel saw that nobody was yielding they said come in i think the men of the city on the eve of judgment coming upon them what they had been doing and doing that some people say I, I will change i will change when it comes near the judgment day, when the rain of judgment is about to fall like this, I'm telling you, I will change. No, change does not happen that way. It doesn't happen that way. They came to the door. They said, Lord, come on. Those men that came want to commit sodomy with them, want to sexually defile them. Bring them out. We'll know them. And Lord said, please don't do that. These are sacred people. These are angels from heaven. They came under my roof so that they can have protection. They said, we're going to deal more ruthlessly with you. This man came in. He came in just like we thought. was seeking accommodation. He now wants to rule. He wants to be a dictator. He wants to be a king, a ruler. We'll deal with you. And eventually those angels pulled Lot in and they blindfolded those people, even in their blindness, they were still looking for the door. They still wanted to commit sin. And then eventually, look at verse 15. Genesis chapter 19, verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lord, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, can you think of that? Fire was coming. He lingered. The angels held the sun. And they told him he could see the urgency in their tone. He could see the urgency on their faces. He could see the urgency in their action. And yet he lingered. You know, there are people like that. They are always lingering. Judgment is coming, they're still lingering. They cannot make up their minds today. This is your last chance to get saved. This is your last chance to escape. Escape the judgment of God. They cannot, they cannot hurry. They cannot say, I'm coming out of this. You know why? He had his life settled in Sodom. He had family settled in Sodom. He had property settled in Sodom. He had servants settled in Sodom. He had cattle. That's what brought separation between him and Abraham. He had cattle settled in Sodom. He had fields settled in Sodom. It's like fire is coming. Destruction is coming. Wrath is coming. Judgment is coming. Why? Why did I take this foolish step? Why did I leave Abraham? Why did I part to this place? And he was still lingering. His mind was not coming out. His eyes were out there. Flee to the mountain. Judgment is coming. And the Bible says, while he lingered, the man that the angel laid holds upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters and the Lord be merciful unto him and they besought him. They brought him forth and set him without the city. Go look at verse 17. And it came to pass. When they had brought them forth abroad. That he said. Escape forth. Escape. Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Second time they use the word again. Escape to the mountain. Lest thou be consumed. You see that warning. Now. You, you profit by what happened to other people. Don't look back. Now, look up here for a moment. Fire is descending on Sodom and Gomorrah. My brother, looking back will not stop that fire. What is lost is lost. Sister, looking back will not stop that fire. The angels commanded fire and the fire came down. And he said, don't look back. What are you looking back to? 
What are you going to get there? The Sikhs are bunny. The camels are bunny. The Aussies are bunny. The people are bunny. The property is bunny. It's the conflagration of the fire of the judgment of God. Don't look back. Look at verse 26. And it says, But his wife looked back. But his wife looked back. Lady Lord, what's the matter? What are you looking back to? Those nightclubs are up in flames. All the cosmetics are up in flames. The worldliness there, Lady Lord, all those things, they are up in flames. What are you looking back for? Why don't you understand? Why don't you obey simple commandment? Look not back. Because all those things, they mean nothing. They amount to nothing now. You will not look back. It says, but his wife looked back. Tell me what follows. From where? Tell me out loud. You know, from behind him. Lady Lord, why were you not by the side of your husband? Why were you not even going in front and take those two daughters and be in front? So that Lord will be the rear guard, your husband, your head, the one that watches over you. So that you're going in front. Why don't you set your mind, your gaze, your eyes, your, your decision on the mountain top? She was behind as Lot was going and the daughters were going. She was lagging behind. You will not stay behind. I said you will not stay behind. This is the time of great revival. You will not stay behind. This is the time God is answering prayer. He's sending angels from heaven. He has favored you. He has favored your family. And he's sent angels from heaven. He said, go to them. I want them saved. I want them to escape. I want them to escape the fire that is going to come on Sodom and Gomorrah. This is not the time to drag your feet and to stay back. But the Bible says that she looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt it will not happen to you she became a pillar of salt when she looked back and think about Lord what, uh, what a kind of serious situation for Lord as she was behind and she became a pillar of salt and they kept on going madam are you still there no voice and they can't look back but he kept on going. Madam Lord, Lady Lord, he am, answer me now. Are you still there? The woman had become a pillar of salt, but the husband could not look back. If two people cannot be saved, at least one ought to be saved. If the whole family cannot be saved, if Lady Lord is back there, we don't know what has happened. She became a pillar of salt. We don't have the luxury, the liberty, the chance to look back. You will not look back. Yeah. You're going to the mountain top. It's a mountain top of holiness, the mountain top of righteousness, the mountain top of standing, standing for the truth, and standing for the word of God. My sister, you will not look back. Yeah. My brother, you will not look back. That heaven, we're going to all get there in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2. And we're looking at it from verse 1. It says, Therefore, because of all these things that we have heard, all these warnings that come to us, therefore, we ought to give the more honest heed to the things which we have heard. Lest at any time, you see that any time, any time, any time, we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels... Angels that came to Sodom. If the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken? By the Lord, I was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. The Lord is calling us to salvation. 
we will be saved. I said we will be saved. If you have not been saved, it's very, it's very easy and very simple. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is your day. You will not be lost. I said this is your day. You will not be lost in Jesus' name. Point number three, the word of exhortation for enduring justification. The word of exhortation for enduring justification. He wants us to endure. He wants us to be steadfast. He wants us, as we have come out of Sodom, to remain out of Sodom. We come out of Egypt. We remain outside Egypt. We cross the Red Sea. We will not look back or go back again to that wilderness in Jesus' name. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 3. The word of exhortation for enduring justification. Hebrews chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 12. Take heed therefore, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. If we are saved, we have come to the living God. Is is a true God, is a living God, and He has saved us, He has forgiven us, but He wants us to remain and to abide. Look at verse 13, but exhort one another daily. Instruct one another daily. Encourage one another daily. Influence one another every day. Inspire one another daily. Exhort. Don't discourage anyone. Exhort. Don't dampen the zeal of anyone. Exhort. Influence. Inspire. Help people to keep on moving on. Let your friends know you as an encourager. As an exhorter, let your friends know you as a builder up, as a lifter up, that no matter what your friends are going through, you are reminding them, keep on moving, keep on marching, and keep on looking forward. Let your friends be people that draw strength from your association and from your interaction. Let your friends know you that if they get to you, no matter if they are down, you will lift them up. I said you will lift them up, but encourage and exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence... You have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, the General Superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you will accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your hearts. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our, our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O oh Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week and the one we are going to listen to the next week by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. If we tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.